Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez, and today I'm doing another video for my Behind the Shot series, which is basically a series that I created to give you guys a lot of information and answer some of the questions that you guys had regarding a shoot that I did. And for today's video, I'm gonna go over this shot that I took of my friend and model Suzette at Dave & Buster's. So to get started, I just wanna talk a little bit about how I got to know Suzette to begin with. And it was pretty much just through a mutual friend of ours who reached out to her and set up a shoot and just invited me to shoot alongside him at that shoot. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is a photo that I took from that shoot, which ended up being lots of fun. A week later after that first shoot, I had gotten my Evolve 200 and I needed a model to kind of test out what it can do. So I just reached out to Suzette on Facebook and asked her if she'd be willing to model. And she said, yeah. And that's when I took this photo of her from that shoot. Suzette likes to model and she likes the photos that I take of her. So whenever I would ask her and she was free, we'd work together. What you're seeing on the screen right now is a photo that I took of her from a video that I did about diffusion. And this very next shot is one that I took of her from a video that I did using budget gear. When I decided to shoot at Dave & Buster's, again, I just simply asked her on Facebook and she was available. So we ended up doing the shoot. So when it comes to the outfit, I always ask the model to send me photos of the articles of clothing by themselves, either hanging up or on the bed, just so that, again, you don't want to come off as a creep when you're working with a model. So with Suzette, she sent me photos of these jeans and these different white and black shirts. So for outfit one, I decided to shoot with this baggy white shirt and those dark ripped jeans because I liked the contrast between the white and the dark and I also liked the relaxed nature of the outfit. Outfit two was different, but still similar to the vibe that I wanted to work with at the shoot. So we ended up with this combo. My friend Eli and myself wanted to go for a Brandon Wolfel look. So we really needed those nice hipster glasses. And even though I forgot to pick some up, Suzette had to return some jeans. So she looked for some glasses and we ended up with not these ones, but these ones right here. What I want to talk about right now is how I even got to shoot at Dave & Buster's to begin with. The very first thing that I did was look up the rules online. So from reading these rules, I figured that I could do a photo shoot there without even asking, but I didn't want to do that at all because it says right there on the bottom that they have the right to change any of the rules for any reason. And I also just didn't want to be rude. So what I did was call ahead of time and ask them if I would be able to shoot with a friend there. They said yes, as long as I speak to the manager before I do any shooting when I get there. One important thing that I want to tell you guys to do is to go right when they open because it's not only going to be something that the manager really appreciates, but there's not going to be anybody there. When I got there the day of the shoot, the manager actually did tell me that he appreciated me going right when they opened because there was not going to be anybody there to interrupt or to get in the way of. One last thing that I wanted to mention was although the manager said I was able to take photos there, he said to specifically not get any titles of the games in my photos because then it would constitute as a commercial shoot and that was something that they couldn't allow. This ended up working perfectly for me because I shoot with the wide aperture with pretty much just the model in focus. So if you guys have seen my other behind the shot videos, you would know that the very first thing that I do is look up the location on Google Maps so I can do a little bit of scoping out before the day of the shoot. But when it came to Dave & Buster's, I couldn't really do that. So what I did was look up Dave & Buster's photo shoot on Pinterest so I can get a little bit of inspiration. The main thing that I was looking for with these photos was how the photographers used the lighting on the machines and how they use the composition as well, which is why I liked this photo right here, which made a very nice softbox kind of effect. And these photos right here, which was a really cool perspective. So when I got there to Dave & Buster's, the very first thing I did was take some photos of some machines to see how the colors look like and also get a different feel of how the compositions were gonna be to basically do a little mini shoot in my head. So I took a photo of this bowling machine because I really liked the colors of the blues and thought that I could use them in a photo and I ended up doing that. And I also took this next shot because it also looked interesting and I thought that I could work with that composition. I also took this photo of the Luigi's Mansion game because it looked pretty interesting. I liked the colors and it was gonna be a reflection shot and I had never taken one before. So I took this photo to remind myself to get that shot. I'm gonna be completely real with you guys and show you some photos that I didn't end up liking and I completely didn't edit at all. And I'm just gonna quickly scroll through some of them right now so you guys can see exactly what I may or may not have liked. And I didn't necessarily like the posing in these shots, but more importantly, I always look for nice attractive light, in, at least in my opinion. So I didn't edit any of these photos. I actually did end up liking this shot, this wide shot, 
but the game title showed up in the corner and it wasn't that good of a lighting so I completely passed on these photos. So for this shoot I invited my friends Jeff and Eli and Eli's turn was next so he came up with this shot and I actually took this photo over his shoulder but I ended up passing on it because of the way her wrist looked. It looked a little too bent and also out of the frame so although I liked the way that her hair was falling and the way that the light was falling on her I passed on this photo. This is just another angle from that last shot. This next area was one that Eli came up with, which is why you see Suzette with the fair lights, because he wanted to go for a Brandon Wolfle look. I ended up really loving the location because of how the background just melted away, and also because of how colorful it looked. So eventually we got to the Luigi's Mansion game for that reflection shot that I wanted to grab, but when we got there, I saw that there were some really distracting lights on her face. I initially thought it was cool looking because it reminded me of David Bowie, but it ended up being too distracting, so I continued to shoot, and it flashed off for her but then it went back on and it got too distracting so I moved around a bit which gave me this perspective but it was even worse because the lights were just really on her face and really distracting. I saw that the light turned green eventually so I thought that was a good luck so I continued to shoot in that area but it didn't turn green so I moved around to a different area to get a different composition and I waited for that green to show back up and it did eventually which is why I edited this photo because I really liked how the colors of the green and blue in the top left mirrored the blue and the green from the bottom right. So that's why I ended up choosing this photo to edit for the video because of the lighting and the composition and the colors in the top left and the bottom right. So eventually we ended up at the Pac-Man game of course, but when we got there, there was not a lot of color. So I passed on these first couple of shots and I thought, you know what, I wanna get a full body shot, but I didn't have enough room behind me. So I ended up taking a Brennizer which is taking a couple of different shots and then stitching them up in post. So I'm going to show you guys some of the shots that I ended up taking of Suzette right there and then the eventual Brennizer that came from those photos. After I took that Brennizer, I really liked it so I wanted to get a different composition so I got closer to the machine and shot at a steeper angle and came up with this photo. I was really lucky that the colors ended up like that because eventually they turned into just black and I got something like this and I didn't really like these shots. So eventually we made our way to the bowling machine and I knew I wanted the colors to light her up from the bottom so she had to get on top of it and she gave me a really nice pose to work with so all I had to worry about was the composition. As I mentioned before timing is very important with these machines because they change colors constantly so this very first shot is kind of green and this next shot is this color and this next one after that is a lot bluer. After I liked that shot of her on the machine I wanted to get something a little bit more relax with her leaning forward which is how we came to this shot but I didn't like the way that her hand was so I asked her if she could kind of put it underneath her chin which would also make her back more straighter so she came up with this pose and it was pretty good but I wanted a little bit of a further shot because I felt this one was a little too tight so I ended up with this photo by taking a couple steps back. Alright so I'm going to quickly scroll through these next photos just because I realized this video is going to be a lot longer than I anticipated it but I wanted to show you guys how the colors change very quickly on this game. My friend Eli was taking photos at this time so I was kind of just worried about the colors and the background but as soon as I started taking these photos I realized you know what she has a different outfit we need to shoot with that different outfit because we've been taking too much photos of her in that first outfit. So after my friend Eli was done taking photos she changed into the next outfit. These were some of the first photos that I took of her in that outfit but my friend Eli was still shooting so I was just taking photos to see how the background would come out and how the composition was so I didn't really like these shots so I ended up moving back to the front of her and took these photos but what I saw when it came to these photos was although I did want her to put her hand on her head it looked like she was saying that you know oh I have a headache so I told her to move the, the hand more to the back and just kind of varied the position until we ended up with this shot which I really did like but her elbow was pointing out right at the edge of the frame so I had her move her elbow and ended up with this photo. This was a shot that I ended up really changing the color temperature of because it started around 4650 looking like this but I wanted to see how it looked like warmer because although it did look nice and cool I was just curious to see how it looked warmer so I changed it from 4650 to 7600 and ended up with that nice warm color. I really liked this photo so I wanted to move on after that so I asked her if she could just turn towards the light which she did but I didn't really like those colors or the composition or the pose so I just moved on after that last shot that I liked. Although I did take that shot of Suzette with the Luigi's Mansion game and a reflection I thought it would be interesting if the reflection was covering half the frame of the shot. So I got her next to this ball drop machine 
and asked her to face me head on and ended up taking this shot, which is the one that I ended up editing for this video. The very first thing that I did was bring up the colors, which I did by getting a hue saturation adjustment layer. And then I brought up the colors using the saturation slider. But before I did that, I wanted to zoom into very saturated areas where right now you see blue and red, those are very saturated because when I bring up the saturation, there gets to a point where it gets very abrupt. The gradient becomes a lot more clumpy, I guess. So I wanted to avoid that. So I brought it down to a level where is it was still very vivid but it wasn't so much abrupt where you can see the differences in the colors between the reds and the blues so i brought it up to 20 and thought that was a good level and then i zoomed back out the very next thing that i did was get a levels adjustment layer and bring the blacks up to around 10 and although it does make the photo a little dark it also makes the colors a lot more vivid and that's the thing that i was aiming for so to counter this darkness that came from the levels the blacks being raised I went and got a curves adjustment layer and brought it up a bit to around, I don't know, a little, like a quarter of the way up. And that gave me a good look that I was aiming for. So I'm going to show you guys how it looked like before and then after. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. But before you guys leave, I wanted to ask you guys to give the video a like because the more likes that the video gets, it helps visibility. And I just want to help more people out. So if you guys could like the video, if I helped in any way, then I would really appreciate that. Alright, take care guys, and I'll see you in the next one.